Iran are going to benefit because they capitulate to U.S. policy. Right, right. And I just find it interesting, Piris, to read that in The Guardian. To me, it almost seems uh, somewhat naive and lacking in information about Indeed. what Iranians really think. Let's Indeed. move on again, because The they Guardian, the Guardian has expanded on this. <laughs> Piris, you get a chance to speak. The Guardian have um, <laughs> expanded upon this um, on page 16 and 17 after doing the headline with uh, a piece by its diplomatic editor, soft-spoken line from Washington may terrify Tehran. Um, the ferocity of the region, um, Iranian regime underlines the potency of the new policy of seeking to influence rather than oust the Ayatollahs. I mean, did it surprise you to hear that? Absolutely. Listen to this. Uh, let me repeat it again. The soft policy or the soft approach, whatever, will, may terrify the Iranians. What is the un underlying suggestion? The underlying suggestion is don't uh, change this hardline policy. Mm. The question then to the man who writes this sort of thing is this. Four years, five years of hardline policy, what achieved? It did not terrify the Iranians. Now, a uh, more friendly approach will terrify us. It's, it's, I don't think it's very difficult to uh, work, work it out. I but think the implication, just imagining things. the implication is that, you know, it's obviously a propaganda war of perception. And um, the, the president of Iran has come out very, very clearly with speaking to the um, Obama administration, clearly outlining what the kind of reassurances they would like and changes in administration okay. policy. But this writer is interpreting that as ferocity, and let me quote him, the ferocity of uh, Aminadinejad's uh, yeah. response does make one thing clear. The Tehran hardliners are more terrified of a moderate and charismatic new voice from Washington than all the sabers rattled by the Bush administration. That's quite a firm conclusion on his own, isn't it, Ken? And it's surprising. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a bit curious, and I'll be honest, I, I did not have a chance to read the full article, so it's hard, mm. to, it's hard to catch the nuance and, and some of the details without the having thing, The read thinking it. is that um, Obama, according to this writer, will, it doesn't trigger the same Persian nationalistic response, according to this writer, that used to rally Iran Iranians around the government at the prospect of American bombs. Yeah, well, oh. it's, I, I, I can't imagine that, uh, that uh, the, the thing that the uh, Iranian government wants is to have a, a continuation of the Bush policy. I have to concur. Surely uh, they would rather have some form of dialogue and uh, some type of uh, capacity to actually deal with this problem rather than simply be threatened left, right, and center. Mm. Of course, uh, whatever softly, softly uh, letter they may be drafting, uh, we all know about uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, obliterate comment. And, uh, you know, again, what... Rem remind our viewers again, what was that? Well, Hillary Clinton uh, very famously said that uh, if, the, if Iran attacked Israel, that uh, the U.S. would be willing to, quote, obliterate uh, Iran. So... Well, not precisely that. The question put to her was that if Iran obliterated Israel, what would you do? He said, well, of course, we will obliterate Iran. That's a natural answer to a not stupid question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it ignores the fact, obviously, that yeah. how is Iran going to obliterate uh, Israel? Well, uh, that is, the, you happen. can put that question, you can ask that question regarding everything they say. And it, it's a long-standing <laughs> policy, not just with Israel, but the United States. On many occasions, uh, they haven't used the, the, the reference to nuclear weapons, but they have said on numerous occasions with regard to uh, Iraq in particular that uh, they were willing to use any means necessary. So that includes, of course, nuclear yeah. weapons yeah. and other weapons within the arsenal. So yes. um, when you're facing that kind of uh, opponent who has the power to back it up, it's, mm. it's daunting. I, I would have to imagine surely Iran would be a little bit happier to deal with something that slightly softer. Right. So let me say just a couple of sentences mm. as an Iranian and Iranian intellectual. These people do not realize that our country, being under constant threats of war for over five years now, constant threats of war by Israel, the United States of America, we, the people, have suffered, suffered severely because in a situation like that, where there is uh, foreign threats of military actions, the first casualty is your debate for democracy. Mm -hmm. That's, we have lost. We Iranians have lost every opportunity, every possibility of continuing with our debate for democracy because of courtesy of Mr. George Bush and Ormet uh, uh, and etc. Et mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I, I think also as well that uh, 
it really does uh, merit repeating that the United States is all too happy to deal with hardline regimes, tyrannical leaders. Obviously, uh, Saddam Hussein was perfectly fine while he was killing Iranians and gassing yeah. Kurds. Mm -hmm. So they're, they have no problem with hardline regimes. It's just hardline regimes that aren't compliant, that can't be bought, they have a right. problem with. Right, right. right. That, that, that seems to be at the heart of the matter. And I'm just intrigued why The Guardian, which is considered a liberal paper here, exactly. has taken this stance. I mean, this is this is any old Guardian freelancer. This is the diplomatic editor of The Guardian who's written this, which did it surprise you to any degree Very because much. it's in The Guardian? Very much so. Yeah. And I, I, just as surprised I was when I was last week reading the uh, caption from Daily Telegraph yes. suggesting that Shariat Madari is a spokesman for the leader and suggest, Shariat Madari suggested that the, the Iranians hate any rapprochement with America. Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, then, then perhaps, <laughs> Ken, could, could we just conclude it doesn't really matter about the label right wing, left wing, in terms of the press and so on. You will get some kind of crossover in terms of different agendas and political thinking. And, and perhaps um, I'm naive in being surprised at seeing this piece in The Guardian. Perhaps so, uh, but uh, again, I, I, I just what's said publicly and what's truly intended to be done are, is hardly ever the same. Sure. And, uh, it, sure. it, whatever they're saying right now, I think that the true intent is 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 not good for the Iranians either way. Yeah, yeah. And let's get to the heart of um, the matter that's capturing the world's attention with regard to the Middle East, and that's what's happening in Gaza. And we'll move on to our third story, which is covered in today's Independent. It's on page 24, under the headline. Release soldier and will end Gaza blockade, said Israel. Olmert tells U.S. envoy that release of Gilad Shalit is crucial to peace deal. That kind of sounds pretty simplistic, Ken. Is that all it's going to take? Well, it's, it's absurd. Uh, the only thing that uh, Hamas probably has is, is Gilad Shalit. Mm. Uh, you know, without him, what do they have? Homemade rockets and uh, kids throwing stones against the fourth largest military in the world. Yes. It would be hard to give up your only bargaining chip and, right. and expect your enemy, who has clearly proved time and time again that they don't care uh, what the world thinks and they're willing to do the most atrocious of things in order to back up a very aggressive policy. I can't imagine that they would have any faith that if they turn over uh, this soldier that somehow everything is going to change, the blockade is going to be lifted. We're always one rocket attack away uh, from a repeat of the same old policy. Yes, yes. And, and from, from listening to that, you know, one condition, release this soldier, who I believe they've had since 2005. Um, what, what, do, what do you think? Do you think to people who are not familiar with the dynamics and the intricacies of the issue that it makes... Um, Hamas seem incredibly unreasonable. For the sake of one Israeli soldier, they're willing to the ignorant well, British well, public perhaps to, to be able to accept the killing of so many people. Well, let's put the uh, table, put the table <laughs> the other way and uh, turn the table the other way. And yeah. uh, remember that uh, Israel bombarded Lebanon almost to the smooth ring for the sake of two soldiers being captured by the uh, Hezbollah. Mm -hmm. As a result, more than a thousand people were slaughtered, and Israel had a large number of its own soldiers died because Israel wanted two soldiers to be released, which can, could be released in more other ways, in, 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 from dialogue and negotiation, etc., etc., through the United Nations, etc. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the other point I'd like to make is that, you know, so there's one corporal from the Israeli army that's being held who's legitimately uh, being held in an armed conflict, quite frankly, and yet there's thousands of uh, prisoners, political prisoners, including parliamentarians in Israeli jails. Are they going to release the thousands of prisoners as well? Yeah. Furthermore, what I would say is, because I'm just an observer, I believe in direct action, I believe there are things we can do. Mm -hmm. if, if Israel is serious about this, then I, I would say, let's add one more thing to the equation. Mm -hmm. Let us get thousands of international observers into Gaza, and at the same time that that corporal is released, let's see if Hamas might agree to that, and let's have thousands of international observer, observers in there long term, so that if there is another invasion, it won't just be Palestinian body parts all over the place and Palestinian blood. Let there be some Western blood that's spilled with the Palestinians. Let them observe and let them collect evidence so that we don't have any questions as to whether there's war crimes or not. I would say that if Israel would agree to allowing thousands of, uh, of international observers in for the release of this soldier and Hamas agrees to that, okay, mm. then let's see what happens. But I always, I'm going to think that if they release this soldier, what will happen is one rocket attack, boom, repeated the same old policy, and then yeah. what? Now yeah. you've got nothing. Exactly, exactly. Well, 
talking about is